for Villarreal. Two to one uh, for them to lift the trophy under Unai Emery. For Solskjaer, how does this game define their season? Well, he said you can define the season after tomorrow. So far, we've improved. We will only all go home happy if we win. We're already happy because look who's here. Shaka Hissop, Ali Moreno and Mark Ogden to look ahead to this game. Mark, let's start with you. What's the big storyline in England going into this clash? Well, the big question is whether Harry Maguire will be fit to play for Man United. Obviously, he's the captain, he's the best defender. Um, he doesn't usually miss many games, but he's not played since he injured his ankle at Aston Villa two weeks ago. And it's looking unlikely that he will play. He missed the open training session tonight, so unless he had a sneaky training session after all the journalists moved away, then Maguire's going to be struggling. I mean, even if he did train, the fact he's not played for two and a half weeks means that he's going to be very kind of on the edge if he does play tomorrow. So I'd expect Maguire to miss out. And the big question after that is who plays in goal, whether it's going to be David De Gea or, or Dean Henderson. I think he'll go for De Gea, but it, Solskjaer hasn't really made a decision about either of them this season, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what his selection is. Uh, let's start with the Maguire quandrum, uh, Ma. So it would be who would come in alongside Lindelof? Well, Axel Twanzebi looks like he's the favourite. I think that Solskjaer likes Twanzebi. I think he's a bit more steady and reliable than Eric Bailly. I think Eric Bailly's got all the athleticism, he's, he's got experience, but he does he does have his moments, Eric Bailly, where he can, you know, lunge into a tackle, pick up a yellow or red card, and I think he trusts Twanzebi more than Bailly, so I think it'll be Lindelof and Bailly. Sorry, Lindelof and Twanzebi against Villarreal. Uh, Henderson or De Gea, Shaq? Does it really matter? It's just a goalkeeper, isn't it? <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll ignore the last second part of that question, Dan. Uh, I think he goes, he goes with De Gea. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sticks with the player who's played in, in the cup competitions of late. And as, as much as uh, Henderson started playing in, in, in Europe earlier this season, once he won over the, the number one shirt, and as far as league competition goes, De Gea has played in the cup competitions. He'll continue. So does that mean... If De Gea is picked, for, he is the ultimate number one mark and Henderson is going to be shipped out in the summer again? No. I think what happens on Wednesday night will define what, what happens. I, I think it does make, make a big difference. I think, I think Dean Henderson won't accept being dropped or re, re, not picked for a, a Europa League final. I think De Gea is probably a bit more laid back. And I think that's part of the problem with, with De Gea, that people at United think that he's too laid back about things. But I think Solskjaer trusts him as being... A better goalkeeper. He's still only 30. United believe they can actually turn De Gea around and, and get him back to his best. So I do think that if Henderson misses out, you'll see that as the, the end of the road from at United. He's, he's very confident in Henderson. He wants to play. And I think he will push for a move if he doesn't play on Wednesday. Regardless who plays at the back or in goal, Ali, you look at that attack, Cavani, Fernandes, Raf, there is so much quality there Then it really should be enough, despite those frailties that may be at the back, to get United over the line. There's no question that Manchester United come into this as favourites. We, we've only seen it from the bookies there, but you just have to look at performances. You just like to have to look at personnel and the availability of those players. And the talent available for Manchester United in the final third is superior to that of Villarreal. I would also say that if you look at Manchester United and individually, all these players that you just mentioned come into this match playing exceptionally well. In particular, Edinson Cavani, who we have seen the very best of him with Manchester United over the last three weeks or so. The quality of goals that he's scoring, the ability that he has shown to provide that final touch, and his ability also to combine, to be a, a holder player when need be, or a, or a guy that runs in behind. His movement off the ball has been excellent. Marcus Rashford kind of plays that supporting role. Bruno Fernandes plays the ball from behind. Paul Pogba has been playing well. You just look overall at Manchester United and you say, you know what, this is a team that has all the experience in the world. They have been in gazillion finals while Villarreal has been in how many finals in Europe? Uh, zero. This would be their first one. And so everything points in the direction of Manchester United. It's interesting that Cavani has become such a focal point, Mark. It's difficult not to like him, isn't it? He's been fantastic for United. I think what he gives United is what nobody else can. He's a proper centre forward. He's, a, he's an out and out old fashioned number nine. He holds the ball up. He moves fantastically. Great finishing. And I think that what, what he's done is he's, he's given Solskjaer the opportunity to play Rashford out wide, Mason Greenwood out wide. Obviously, there's a question mark over Anthony Martial going forward. But I do think that 
Cavani's form has made him, you know, a first choice up front, and I think it has raised a bit of a question over Marcus Rashford because the, the three men behind Cavani will be Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba, and probably Marcus Rashford. But you could make a case for Mason Greenwood because the way that Mason Greenwood's finished the season has been exceptional. Rashford hasn't really been hitting his top form for quite a while now. I think he's, you know, he, he's been inconsistent in front of goal. You know, he's Marcus Rashford. He, he's a player that has got a great reputation, but I do think that Mason Greenwood is pushing him a lot. You know, really hard now for a place in the team. I think Solskjaer will pick Rashford on Wednesday, but I do think it could be a close call because Greenwood has probably done enough to deserve a start now. Ali, just give us the Villarreal story. You've seen a lot of them this season going into this final. A team that has some good pieces, a team that has in Gerard Moreno a guy who will score goals and has done consistently in La Liga this season, a ball-playing midfielder of Dani Parejo who lacks a little bit of pace defensively, who doesn't cover a lot of space in terms of what he does uh, in, in the middle third, but when he does have the ball on his feet, he's a good distributor of the ball. In Pau Torres, they have a center back that is highly sought after and highly spoken about, and perhaps uh, the next big center back who's going to move to a, an important club across Europe. And there are, play, there are pieces to like about uh, Villarreal, but I think of all the pieces that you may like about Villarreal, the one guy that you're going to have to look at if you are a Villarreal fan is Samuel Chukwese. If he's healthy, he gives you athleticism on the side. He gives you speed, actual speed, actual pace. So assuming that you're absorbing a lot of pressure defensively, he would be the natural outlet on a counterattack opportunity. He has been out with a quiet injury. If indeed he's back and close to 100%, then Villarreal becomes far more dangerous. However, as I just said before, in terms of the talent level, I mentioned a few nice pieces for Villarreal, but they don't quite compare to what Manchester United has to offer. If Manchester United plays at their best, I don't think Villarreal has an opportunity here. However, anything less from their best, if you're Manchester United, then Unai Emery in an Unai Emery final, Europa League, yep. then that team becomes dangerous. I think it's all about Manchester United and how they approach this game. Well, it's interesting you mention it, Emery. We saw there, Ali, what he's going for his fourth Europa League title. How much of a difference does that actually make going into these sort of games? Well, I think it does. Uh, See, when it happens one time, you're like, ah, well, you know, coincidence. It, it, it kind of worked out. It kind of fell their way. But when it's happened four times, there is a know-how that Unai Emery has about playing these games with a team like Villarreal and those Sevilla teams that he had in those finals. Those were very similar teams to this version of Villarreal. And so you can see some of the parallels here. And so I think that Unai Emery will have this team ready to play, will have this team ready to go. There will be a setup tactically that will allow Villarreal to try to control the pace of the game. If they're able to do that, if they're able to slow it down and not make it a back and forth to Manchester United, then Villarreal kind of grows in confidence. And that's where Unai Emery he kind of fits in in that I think he knows very well what he has available and I think he knows very well what his team needs to do mm. in order to be able to beat Manchester United. Shaka in the locker room. It, it, there's a lot of ruckus going on. Is that your house, Shaka? Yeah. What's happening? What was this? What's happening? People walking by. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Tell them that you're having a very important discussion about the Europa League final <laughs> and you need to focus on this. Uh, Shaka, overall, I'm trying just that. from a player's perspective, big players in both locker rooms, how much difference does a Solskjaer character compared to an Emery one? Uh, huge, especially given the imbalances be between these two squads. If we were having uh, a discussion around Manchester United, their squad, and Unai Emery as, as their manager and uh, vice versa with Villarreal and, and, and Sosha, I, I, you know, I, I, nobody would give Villarreal any, any bit of a hope. Um, but with the lesser squad and the better manager, Villarreal have a, have a punch's chance here. Keeping in mind that this is a team that come into this final undefeated in this competition, have only failed to score once in this competition. Um, so they, they are not going to be pushovers. United by far the better the two if you look at, at just talent-wise. Maybe coaching plays a part, but right now you have to lead in talent so you understand why the bookies make United as heavy favourites as they do. 
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.